Okay, so this queer movie has criminals, cannibalism, giant lobsters, and a rosary job. So Multiple Maniacs, directed by John Waters, came out in 1970. The story is very light. It follows a traveling sideshow, which is run by Divine, who are really a bunch of criminals. And the person she runs it with, she discovers is having an affair, and so that's where the drama ensues. Um, it's, it's a film that's very light on story, but heavy on the density of the characters and the set pieces. It's a very crazy movie, and it's hard to really explain exactly what goes on in it. And the, the acting is not realistic. It, it, just like Waters' other films, his earlier films, they work in this very campy way. You can, you can kind of feel like it's not going for realism, it's going for this hyper-realism. You can tell that the actors are trying to remember their lines and scenes, but that's what's so special about the movie. It's not really about the realism of the scene, but the outrageousness of the situation. There are really crazy scenes in this film, particularly one that happens in a church, and it is very, very blasphemous. Um, it is a scene that goes on and on and on, and it's having to do with a rosary. It's a very sexually explicit scene in a church, and, I, and it's crazy how they filmed it. I have no idea how they call it a rosary job, which is probably one of the first times that's been used in a film. And yeah, I mean, th this film is just completely surrealistic and absurd. I mean, there's a giant lobster that attacks the divine character at one point. I mean, you just gotta go with it. It's that type of movie that... And like John, John Waters' other stuff, he doesn't... He embraces this idea of gay slurs and he uses that. I mean, he said in, in interviews that he he likes to weaponize, you know, what 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 people are afraid of and and he I think particularly for this film there's an interview where he says that this was a revolt against good taste. This movie was against the tyranny of good taste which I grew up in certainly. And um but at the same time that's all in hindsight. You know, when we were making it, it was just like a kid today on the cell phone, making a movie with his friends. It's this exact same spirit. Now the film is, is shot very documentary-like. John Waters, he doesn't use a lot of coverage. He's just sort of kind of filming it as if it's happening in real time. And you can see a lot of modern shows, you know, like The Office or Parks and Rec. Any really popular modern show uses this technique. So in retrospect, it, it kind of feels like this is a very modern, even though it was one of the first to utilize this very, you know, haphazard way of filming. So the film has a big shadow of the Sharon Tate murders throughout. Um, I mean, because the film came out in 1970 and that, that event happened in 1969. So it had just happened. It was fresh in everybody's mind. You, you can sense that especially in a scene later in the film, not giving it things away, but there's, there's a shot that just lingers on things. And you totally can get a sense that this was John Waters' exploration into that horrible news event. You know, I, I'm sure that had an effect on him, and I feel like this movie, in a lot of ways, was a reaction to that. There's something so sincere about these movies, especially the way that they were filmed. You, you feel like it's very inspiring. It, it almost, and this is not, again, to disparage the film, but you feel like anything could be a movie in, in a very, you know, inspiring way. Like, you could just take your camera, you don't have to worry about coverage. You could just go out and film something, you know, that you're passionate about. I mean, it's, it's a lot tamer than the film that preceded it. Um, Pink Flamingos. And that also happens to be one of the filthiest films ever made. And if you want to learn about that, you could click right here.